If you want to unlock the hottest, highest, and healthiest version of yourself, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to today's episode of Hot and Unbothered. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to my podcast. If you are new here, my name is Brianna Gomez, and I am your host of the podcast Hot and Unbothered. If you're just now finding me, welcome. Let me know in the comments or in the reviews how you found the podcast because I'm genuinely curious if you found it on your YouTube Explore page, your Instagram Reels, your TikTok, your Spotify recommended. I'm so curious how you found me. So please stay a while. If you are truly dedicated to unlocking the hottest, highest version of you, to locking in, getting down to the nitty gritty gritty and truly leveling up your life glowing up this summer go ahead and hit the follow button what are you waiting for? Join the Hot and Unbothered fam. I promise you won't regret it. You better just dial in now. Commit to it. Anyway, as you guys know, we are already in summer and I feel like summer is the time where it's literally like shedding your old version of yourself. Summer to me is the perfect time to take your past self, your past truths, your past perceptions, fears, traumas, throw them out the window. We're starting fresh. You are not the same person you were last year, last month, last season, last week. You get the opportunity to start new every single day. So why not make that day today? Let's not beat around the bush. Don't lie to me. I know you want to be looking hot this summer. I know you want to be looking the hottest, glowiest, finest, fittest you've ever been. And I'm here to tell you how to do that. And I see you in your search history. I see you looking up, saving to your Pinterest boards. You want to enter your healthy girl era. It's something that you've been putting off for so long because it seems like a lot of work. But, you know, you see the inspo. You see the healthy fitness, wellness girlies. And you're kind of like, what would I look like? if I lived a life like that. And something that I used to put off so often, and I'm guilty of doing it still some days, is I put off my health and well-being. It's just overall something that I think not everybody prioritizes, but it's so important, not because of the way you look necessarily, but because of how it affects you so much in your day-to-day life. And I don't think we even realize it. Your mood, your mental health, your well-being, your sleep, everything comes down to wellness. And since it's affecting your mood and your mental health, it's directly affecting your relationships. It could be affecting your work life, your mental health, your relationship with yourself. It's affecting so many little factors that overall can make a huge difference in whether or not you live a good life or a bad one. And as I always say, I'm not going to sit here and tell you to run three miles every single day and to lift weights six out of the seven days of the week. I know it's not that easy for everybody. It's not even that easy for me. Like, I don't even do that. But overall today, I'm going to teach you how to have a healthy girl summer. And again, just want to clarify, I'm not saying you have to be skinny. I'm not saying you have to eat certain things or look a certain way. I think it's all about truly how you treat your body inside that shows outwards. Getting into the health and fitness world is something that can be very daunting and kind of intimidating and scary for a lot of people. And it took me a while to actually start learning things about like fitness, working out, health, wellness, anything like that. And I'm going to talk to you guys about fitness, wellness 101. You know, I'm not a coach. I'm not a trainer, but I do my best most days. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how I got into wellness and where you should start. And again, I am not one of those girls that's like, I don't drink a single sip of alcohol. I don't eat sugar. I would never touch a carb in my life. That is not health. I just want to make that so clear. Just because someone's like, I would never touch a donut in my life. Like, that's not what I'm going to sit here and tell you to do at all. So don't worry. I'm not going to go into full-on personal trainer, wellness, dietitian mode because I'm still figuring things out myself. So this is a video for people who want to find simple, easy changes that they can incorporate into their life life and kind of learn how to start their fitness journey, wellness journey, and how I started mine and how to incorporate these habits to have a healthy girl summer. Before we get into the nitty gritty of today's episode, you guys know I love to share a podcast review. Today we have Jane. She said, oh my gosh, I've never written a review before, but wanted to take a moment to thank you. This podcast changed my life. Within a month, I feel like a new person. This is exactly what I needed. I say this every time, but I'm literally going to cry. The fact that these videos are making a difference in people's lives and I'm just speaking from personal experience and things I've learned, that means the absolute world to me. You guys have no idea. So I am so, so grateful for that and your reviews and your support and your kind comments and just like following the podcast and supporting means more to me than you will ever know because literally 
two months ago, I felt like no one was listening to this podcast. I felt like it wasn't going to take off or go anywhere. So I thank you guys for that. That is mind-blowing to me. Also, I officially have started a group chat channel on Instagram for all the hot and unbothered girlies so we could all talk on there, keep each other updated. I'll send motivation, things like that. It's going to be on my personal Instagram at Brianna Gomez with two B's at the beginning. So if you follow me on there, I'll be able to send you the invitation for the broadcast channel. It's going to be the hot and unbothered babes or something like that. So yeah, and then the hot and unbothered socials are at hot unbothered on TikTok, Instagram, and add me on Snapchat, Brianna Gomez with two B's so we can be more personal on there. I'm trying to get more girls on there because I don't know what it is about the snapchat world but there's always guys on there and I'm like ew 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 this is for the girls who want to become their hottest highest selves step back anyway healthy girl summer I feel like when some people think health and wellness they might think of the ironically unhealthy perception of health and wellness you know that could be the super isolating very rigid very restricting way of living that is not health, that is not wellness. All good things in life come in moderation. So yes, live a happy, healthy, clean living life, but that doesn't mean every now and then you can't enjoy a little, a little treat, a little night out. And this might be contradictory. Of course I want to look toned. Of course I want to be slaying, glowing, looking fit and strong this summer, but I'm not going to let the way I look make me become obsessive over my workouts and so strict with myself that I'm not happy anymore. That's like a whole other deep conversation. I'm just trying to get onto the surface level of how to have a healthy girl summer and get into fitness and wellness. So focus on, you know, what's your end goal? Do you want to be stronger? Do you want to heal your gut? Do you want to be able to run longer? Do you want to be able to be more toned? Do you want to build muscle? Do you want to burn fat? Like there's so many different goals that people have in the fitness world. So I think it's super important to target those as well. When I was growing up, you know, I grew up first dancing and then cheerleading. And I think I became very obsessed with the image of skinny, mainly because I was genetically skinny my whole life. And then once I hit puberty, very late my body weight was fluctuating and I was growing and I was like oh my gosh like what do I do what do I do and I felt like shit about myself and I thought the only way that I was ever gonna look good again is if I started doing insane cardio and ab workouts one I think an important thing to recognize is that your body is constantly changing we are on a not 24 hour cycle of hormones like men are women's bodies change every single hour of the day every single day of the month like you're gonna feel different your body's gonna look different every single day so that's one thing that i really try to learn and practice is to stop judging my body on a day-to-day -day basis based off the way it looks and i like to base it off of how i feel a metaphor that really helped me gain a healthy perspective on the gym fitness wellness is to envision my body as a car. I know it sounds silly, but envision your body as a car, right? What do cars need? They need fuel. They need gas. So when you're eating, you know, you don't necessarily have to cut out everything, but be conscious of the type of gas you're putting in your car. So, you know, maybe a $2 McDonald's cheeseburger is not going to fuel your body the same way a beautiful, like homemade whole food breakfast is gonna fuel your body. Again, I'm not saying never eat the McDonald's. I love a good McDonald's. But what I'm saying is, majority of the time, if you are feeding your car the cheap gas every single time that you fill your gas, every single day, your car is not gonna last as long as the car that is getting the expensive premium gas put in it. Same thing with how you drive your car. If you are constantly like gunning the acceleration and then like slamming the brakes super hard and driving on cobbled road with a bunch of slashes in your tires, I don't freaking know, like your car is not gonna last a long time. But if you're driving it smoothly, if you're being careful and gentle with it, of course it's gonna last longer. But you know, same thing with your car, you have to drive it sometimes, make sure the battery stays alive, things like that. But then you also need to give your car a break, you need to take it to the shop, get an oil change, things like that, and you have to put care into your car. The cars that get that attention, that extra care, they're going to last longer. They're going to run better compared to the cars that are literally treated like shit, fueled with cheap gas and not taken care of. And that helped me a lot with eating because I am not going to sit here and tell you like you have to eat 
kale, straight kale and eggs and chicken and rice every single day, every single meal. That's not enjoyable. So a huge way that helped me with my fitness journey is obviously your diet is so, so important, but I will never go on a diet. Personally, I found that any kind of diet or restricting doesn't work for me. So a huge tip I have is to find out what works for you. Maybe sticking to a certain diet, you know, maybe there's certain foods that really hurt your gut or they make you feel bloated, they don't make you feel well, maybe consider cutting those out. It's definitely trial and error in figuring out what works for you, but for me personally, I literally just rewired my brain to treat my body and eat mindfully. Everything is just like what makes me feel the best. I don't typically count calories, macros, or anything like that. I think that's more if you're looking to be like serious, like bodybuilding or see crazy results. Like obviously do whatever works for you. Look into the macros. For me personally, I can't count calories. I don't think it'd be good for me. If you have that stigma around food that's like you need to eat less food to look better, erase that. Erase that. So like for example, if I want pasta... I'm going to eat the pasta with chicken in it because protein is so, so good for you. A huge tip I have is to eat 30 grams of protein right when you wake up in the day. That will get you solid. That will get you so solid for the day. That's going to start you at a steady blood pressure, help the circadian rhythm. It's going to help balance your hormones, things like that. It will get you so good, set your metabolism at a steady rate for the day. But back to diet, you should enjoy the food that you're putting in your body. Food is not made to make us miserable, okay? So you should be eating things that make you feel good and that honestly taste good to you. For example, eggs are great for you. I don't enjoy them that much personally, so I would put them on my avocado toast. Sourdough, avocado, egg, like so yummy, and I would look forward to it every single morning. I would put my Trader Joe's seasoning on it. I would take an aesthetic picture. I'd make a smoothie with it, and in that smoothie, I sneak in all the foods that I should be eating that I don't like, and like chia seeds, Greek yogurt has protein in it, protein powder. Like, you can literally put that shit in a smoothie. You are solid. You're solid. And that is so much more fun and enjoyable for me than just like forcing myself to eat straight eggs. I would not like that. But instead, I'm getting, you know, nutrients. And I want you, when you're eating food, to think volume. Think of having a colorful plate. Like, think I'm having some carbs here, some fruits and fibers here, protein here. I remember when I was younger, there'd be days where I'd be like, oh, I'm not going to eat any sugar. Like, I'm just going to try not to eat any sugar. And then by the end of the night, I will have gone the whole day without eating any sugar at all because I used to have the craziest sweet tooth. And then by the end of the night, I would be downstairs in the kitchen eating an entire box of Oreos, literally the entire thing. And I would feel like shit. I would literally feel sick afterwards, but my taste buds and my addiction to the sugar just could not take it. So what did I do? I backslid. I binged. So if you enjoy something or you're craving something, have it but like have it in moderation and like treat yourself. If you worked out that day, if you've been eating clean all day, a little cookie is not going to hurt you. It's just not. And I feel like humans put that stigma behind a lot of things like, oh, never, I would never touch a cookie or a piece of chocolate in my life. Like you're not going to die. I promise. Scientifically eating one thing wrong, giving yourself one little cheat meal, that is not going to ruin all the progress that you've made. I mean, if you're doing cheat meals every single meal of every single day, of course, that's going to make you lose some progress. But if you've been doing so good and you're having this craving, you don't want to treat yourself to this little treat, do it. Like, it's not going to kill you. And again, I think long term for me or for people who are just starting out, that's what made it a lot easier. And like when I first started lifting weights, you know, I would justify every single thing I was eating. I was like, oh, gains. Everything is gains. Please eat when you're hungry. That's your body telling you things. Eat after your workouts. Fuel your body with protein, with good stuff. Again, I am not a professional. I'm just speaking from experience and what worked for me. But you need food. Your body needs fuel to run. It's a car. I also highly suggest do your research on certain foods. Find out, you know, why is avocado good for you? Why are blueberries good for you? What foods have the most proteins? Like, I like to go through lists of foods that actually literally have superpowers. And then I like to pick out the ones that I like and try to incorporate those in my diet and my snacks and my smoothies and it honestly makes eating food so much more fun i highly suggest going on pinterest looking at fun like protein filled meals whatever you're looking for however you're trying to eat whatever your goals are look at pinterest for that find some fun new recipes to try take them on a picnic meal prepping is huge you guys i think a lot of our progress when it comes to eating a certain way does come down to 
preparation of it. So some days you might be grabbing fast food because you're so hungry or you forgot to pack a lunch to work or school or you know you're so tired after a long day you don't want to go home and cook. If you prep your meals usually like Sunday night is a great one you prep them for the week you're set. You are set. You have no excuse and you're saving money. Everything is better for you I swear when you make it from home. Like even if you're making a cheeseburger at home versus a cheeseburger at McDonald's, the one from home is going to be better because you know exactly what's going into it. You know what oils, you know what preservatives are or aren't going into it. Like everything that you make at home, you know what it's being made of. On the other hand, if you're getting it fast food, like they are putting so much nasty shit and chemicals in there. You don't even know. That's why you feel bloated. That's why you feel tired. That's why you feel like shit after you eat it. But if you make it at home, you could literally make the same thing. You're going to feel so much better. And if you really are trying to eat healthier, don't cut out things that you totally enjoy. If you love In-N-Out, go get the protein style burger and the lettuce wrap. Like that is so good. I really hate to see people cut out things that are making them happy. And I don't know, I'm not saying like don't have any discipline. Don't cut things out. Being healthy does not mean being miserable. It does not mean restricting yourself from things that you enjoy. It means doing things that make you and your body feel your absolute best. That's why like intuitive eating is so huge for me. If I'm hungry, I'm going to eat. And if I feel like eating a certain thing, I'm going to eat that. And also like listen to your body. If your body's craving like cookies or super sugary sweets, maybe you need more fruit. Maybe you're dehydrated. There's like charts that will tell you literally what your cravings mean in your body. I think that's super helpful. That's enough about food. When it comes to fitness, I just need you to move your body in some way. The human body is meant to move around. We are not meant to stay in bed staring at a screen all day. Sometimes that might feel like what you're meant to be doing. Stop. Again, it's okay if you have a chill day every now and then. We love a good lazy day. I am a victim of bed running sometimes myself, but don't let that take over your life. Like, I want you to think when someone asks you what your hobby is, do you even have one? Because I feel like we're getting to the point in society where a lot of people don't even have hobbies other than scrolling through social media. You need to be getting out in the sun every single day. It's going to improve your mood. It's going to boost your energy. Literally after feeling in the sun, I feel so revived. And again, I'm not saying you have to run three miles and lift hundreds of pounds of weights, but I'm saying move your body in a way that you truly enjoy. I think that's a huge part of having a healthy relationship with fitness is not forcing yourself to do things that you don't even like. So figure out what you do like. Maybe it's Pilates. Maybe it's dance classes. I really want to take like a little ballet class. I think that'd be really fun. Maybe it's yoga. Maybe it is running or walking. People have been going off with the running lately. I literally want to try. Going on a beautiful nature hike. Maybe you're a little shy. Do some workout videos at home. Maybe it is going to the gym for you. I think it is so important to figure out a way of movement that you do truly love. And honestly, like give different things a try. Maybe you're not going to be good at something the second that you start it, but do something that is honestly fun and enjoyable for you that you look forward to. I think of like my boyfriend, going to the gym for him is literally like a release. It's like therapy, he always says. And I think that is so awesome. When you're moving your body, it should feel like therapy. And exercising, moving your body is not only going to obviously benefit the way that you look, but it is so, so good for your mental health. It's so good for my anxiety. Like whenever I work out in some way, shape or form, I feel so much more grounded after a workout. So just give it a try. And also if you want to be like a gym girly, a workout girly, set realistic goals for yourself. So, you know, when there's days when I used to tell myself, I'm going to go on a hike every single day at 7 a.m. in the morning, maybe that's not quite so realistic for me. But you know, if I say, okay, I'm just gonna shoot to go to the gym three to four times a week on, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and maybe every other Sunday. That's a little more realistic for me than going every single day of the week. Because when you set unrealistic goals for yourself, that's when we get stuck in the toxic mindset and pattern of I'll try again tomorrow. And I've said this before, but I'll say it again. The best day to start was yesterday. And the second best day to start is today. So I don't know what you're waiting for. I don't know what you keep putting back. I don't know if you're waiting for the perfect gym fit. If you're waiting to find a new gym membership, like move your body now. You're not going to get this day back. You know what I mean? And I feel like so many people who I know like in the fitness world, they're like, wow, if only I had started sooner. If only I realized what I needed to be doing sooner. And in no particular order, all three are so important, but you need to be eating 
right and enough and mindfully. Fueling your body with good nutrient-dense foods and then moving it in some way, shape, or form. That's going to depend on what your goals are. If you want to build muscle, if you want to shred fat, if you want to just work on your endurance, that's going to be totally up to you. And then rest and recovery. For me, surprisingly, rest and recovery is actually the hardest hardest part. To put it into perspective, when you are working out, especially lifting weights, you're essentially making tiny little rips in your muscle. You're essentially hurting your muscles to grow them. So it's kind of a cool concept there. They're not going to grow back stronger unless you rest and recover. And I think that's where a lot of people get confused and also burnt out is when they first start working out or when they get like really carried away with working out, they're like working out all the time, every single day not resting at all. And you're like, why am I not seeing any results? You have to rest to see results. If you want to see results, the sleep and the behind the scenes stuff is just as important. So that's why I think it's so important to not get so hyper fixated on like working out super hard, lifting super heavy, burning a bunch of fat. Like yes, but sleep and eat. I had a personal trainer tell me that your off days, like what you eat and how you treat your body are even more important in your progress than the days that you're working out. You need to be getting eight hours of sleep minimum, which I'm a hypocrite. I hardly ever get that, but it's something that I'm working on really hard. And then on your period, I heard that women are supposed to be getting two extra hours, so 10 hours of sleep. Again, it's like the fueling your body analogy, like your body needs so much rest to recharge for the next day. And I notice it in my mood, like the way I treat my body, the things I eat. Like I went to a party the other day, right? I went to a graduation party and I hadn't slept. I had hardly eaten and then I just get there and I'm drinking alcohol. Like I was actually such a bitch. I was in the worst mood. I was so irritable and irritated. I wanted to go home so bad because I had not been fueling my body correctly and it was catching up on me. And I feel like we all think that we're superhuman. We all think that we're invincible and like we can run off of no sleep, <laughs> nether club, no sleep. You know that TikTok? We think we can run off of no sleep, no food, a coffee, a crazy energy energy drink and like some gum. That's not going to cut it. Because since we're young, our bodies will still function, but it's going to catch up to you and it's not going to feel great when it does. Please start building healthy habits with yourself now because the way that you treat your body truly does reflect in, yes, actually how you age, but also your day-to-day -day mood, which is therefore affecting your relationships and your interactions with other people. It could affect how you feel about yourself, how you feel about your work. Like it truly does affect everything. It's a chain reaction. And I truly notice a difference. Like when I'm taking care of my body versus when I'm not, like I can tell a difference in my mood and how my body feels. And you have to listen to your body also. Maybe there's a day you were supposed to work out, but you are really not feeling it. Your body's exhausted. You didn't sleep well last night. Listen to your body. If you miss one workout, it's not going to kill you. Come back again tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like you'll make up for it. I think listening to your body is so, so important. Your body is literally sending signals to you all the time. If you have a headache, I feel like we're like, oh, whatever, just a headache. Like that means something. You need to be drinking more water. If you have a stomach ache, maybe you're not eating enough, you know, nutrients, maybe you need to eat more. And if your body feels so exhausted, don't keep pushing yourself to your limits. Go home. I think there's a healthy balance between like pushing yourself and being super disciplined and working hard versus like when your body is truly sending out red flags, like do not push me any harder or I'm going to give out on you. There's a difference. And if you want to start moving your body more, you know, getting into the gym, it can be scary. Looking up TikToks of how to use machines at the gym literally saved me. Also, get a buddy pass, go with a friend who maybe already has a gym membership or who's also trying it out for the first time. Having a workout buddy is so fun and it helps so much to motivate each other, keep each other accountable, and try to teach each other new things, things like that. But yeah, watching videos on social media actually helps so much with like fitness tips. Obviously, maybe fact check what you're looking at, but it helped me figure out a lot of stuff at the gym. Also, so when you're working out, remember that literally nobody is looking at you. I feel like people get embarrassed. They're like, I don't like the way I look. Maybe you're self-conscious. Maybe you're self-conscious that you don't know how to do the workouts, you know, whether you're in a class or, you know, just lifting weights on the floor. You don't want people to look at you. I used to think like this so much. I would be so embarrassed to go to the gym by myself and for people to see me. Literally, no one is looking at you. I've been going to the gym for over like almost a year and a half now and no one's looking at you. 
nobody everyone's like so focused on figuring their own shit out they're so dialed in on what they're doing like they're not looking at you and don't be afraid to ask for help either i honestly am so flattered when people ask me for help or like advice at the gym i'm like do I look like I know what I'm doing? And romanticize everything. Like, if you have the money, invest in the cute workout set. Amazon has great ones. You know, get a cute water bottle that's going to help you drink water. You should be drinking a gallon a day. At least half a gallon, if not a gallon. Get the cute gym bag. I got a new gym bag. I'm honestly, like, so much more motivated to go now. Do the things that are going to make working out for you more fun and enjoyable. Make the playlist. But you just have to start. Because, again, once you get started, you're going to wish that you started so so much sooner like I see those videos where it's like get abs in two weeks and I'm like well if I would have started that two weeks ago I would have had a shredded six-pack by now and again like everyone's results for everything are going to be different so you can't compare body type plays a huge huge role in overall physique so don't get upset or discouraged if you're not seeing results as fast as someone else genetics has a huge part in it but I promise you will just glow differently and look so much healthier and happier if you are just moving your body and taking care of it in ways that make you feel your best. There's no rule book when it comes to health and fitness and wellness. Like you just have to do what makes you feel good because if you start off, you know, forcing yourself to go to the gym, but you actually don't like going to the gym, you are are going to have a horrible relationship with fitness you know what I mean but if you start going on hikes or yoga classes or dance classes if that's your form of exercise and that's a passion for you do it like do something that makes you feel good morning and night routine is also so crucial in just setting your body up for success so I talked about this in my other episodes but think of it as the closing and the opening shift so at night you know do your skincare routine, set really healthy habits for yourself, stretch every single night. I start doing this thing. I try to do a one minute plank at least like every single night, once a day at least. Cause like, why not? It takes one minute to just build strength. Every day we have a choice, right? And there are so many choices that you probably don't even realize you make in a day to take the healthier option. If you're going to scroll through your phone, scroll through your phone while you're walking on the treadmill. Like literally it is game changer. If you're going to doom scroll, get up, go on the treadmill, just scroll. I like to edit videos while I'm on my phone. It is so productive. I'm getting my workout in while I'm working on my videos. Like I'm literally killing two birds with one stone or even making the decision to, you know, walk somewhere instead of taking your car if it's close by. Or if you're going to a different level of a building, like take the stairs instead of the elevator. Literally baby changes make the biggest difference if you make it a habit over time. Doing a five minute stretch or yoga routine every single night, it's so game changer. Apple cider vinegar water every single morning drinking a dream drinking a warm drink in the morning I cannot even describe how much it will help with your bloating and with your gut and your digestion before any food one table before any food I do one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar one tablespoon of lemon juice some honey and some hot water it makes me feel so good in the morning I don't drink coffee I don't drink caffeine if you like your coffee please do me a favor wait to have it after you eat your breakfast just try it. Coffee's not breakfast. I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you. Coffee's not breakfast. You know, maybe if there's something you're trying to cut out, maybe it's coffee, try substituting for like a green tea, things like that. Like you don't have to cut out all caffeine, but make little switches here and there that help you get on a better path to fueling your body with more energy that's going to last you longer throughout the day. One thing I want you guys to start doing, I have the five minute journal. It's the wellness edition and something that truly changed the game for me is every single morning. I want you guys to try this. Ask yourself three things that you're going to do for your health and well-being today. So, you know, sometimes I'm like, I'm going to go in the sauna. I'm going to get my steps and I'm going to make sure I drink a gallon of water or I'm going to, you know, meal prep my meals, things like that. I do that every single morning. So I want you guys to try that. That's a little exercise for this week. And then every single night, basically the same thing. Ask yourself, what are three things that I did actually do for my health and well-being today? And it truly makes you realize how many little opportunities you have in a day to make the healthy choice. Again, it's all about balance because I feel like you know there's a point where everyone thought like in high school or college or whatever like they think that because they're drinking and they're going out getting plastered like they're automatically cooler 
isn't it so much cooler to like live longer, to glow better, to have a better, healthier life? I'm not saying you're better than everyone else if you, you know, don't drink or you don't party or anything like that, but it truly is everything in moderation. It's the 80-20 rule. So if 80% of the time, you know, you're eating healthy, you're going to the gym or doing your workout classes, whatever it is for you, you're getting your sleep, your rest, like it's okay if 20% of the time, like for the weekends, you want to go have a fun time to celebrate things with your friends. Or it's okay if 80% of the time you're eating super healthy and you're doing a super good job. It's okay if for that 20%, you want to have a little dessert. You want to treat yourself. Like it's okay. So don't use health as a punishment. Don't use fitness and working hard on your body as a punishment. If you are working out or doing something and you're finishing it and you're like, God, I feel awful, like cancel that retry you should be you know after a meal you should be feeling like wow i feel so fueled and energized after this or you should say like after that workout class like i feel like such a dopamine rush and i feel so good about myself i'm so glad i did that like that is the best feeling so if you're feeling like oh my gosh i totally regret that and i feel like shit like you're probably doing something wrong and you need to rethink things, try something different. Because personally, what I found is that you will never regret showing up for yourself. And I've said this before, like on days when I don't feel like going to the gym, but I go anyways, like, and after my workout, I'm like, wow, I'm so glad I did that. And it wasn't even that hard. And again, like you can always go at your own pace. Even if I don't feel like working out super hard that day, I will show up and I will do something most times. But then if I'm super exhausted, like I will go home and I will rest because that's so important there was a famous bodybuilder that like would ask his students like when was your last week off and a lot of people who overtrained super hard they could not even tell you when their last week off was but even that time off can be so important and beneficial for your body because rest is just important actually i'm gonna say it's even more important than the workouts so it's not just about stressing your body and putting your body through those movements but it's about how you rest and recover from that it's about how you fuel your body after that there's so many other factors and working pieces that play into it and you have to take that into consideration obviously like finding a balance is so huge like it's still summer yes you want to look good but you also don't want to make yourself miserable and i know so many people who yes they go to the gym and they eat well and they work out and they take care of their bodies but they still know how to have fun and they don't let it completely take over their lives so it's all about finding a balance and whatever works for you i love you guys so so much thank you for watching this episode if you enjoyed please make sure to leave a podcast review for the chance to be featured in next week's episode follow the hot and unbothered socials at hot and bothered and my personal at brianna gomez with two b's on snapchat instagram youtube also i may or may not have a piece of clothing coming out i have like a little mini skirt set it's like pink lacy with bows and like a pink lace halter top for summer so look out for that sometime soon let me know what else you guys want to see from me i love you guys so so much and i will see you next free day love you bye Mwah.